Hey guys, how you doing? JP Sari Kolia here, and welcome again to another episode of H of Heroes, my podcast. Welcome to those who are watching this in YouTube, and also to those who are listening through different platforms, iTunes, Teacher, Spreaker, CastBox, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Radio, all of them, you name them. <laughs> There's so many. I cannot keep up with all of them. But I want to welcome you uh, to the opportunity just to that, that you're giving me, that you're providing me to express my thoughts and to share uh, my feelings, emotions, and definitely my opinion in regards to a lot of issues and a lot of facts and a lot of things that are happening in the world. And uh, I really enjoyed this opportunity. Uh, as I mentioned in my last uh, episode and the previous episode last week, uh, I wasn't planning to come back to the podcast, but uh, I've been uh, motivated by it. Uh, I've been motivated to express how I feel because I think there are a lot of things that are happening right now around us or in the world. There are a lot of things that are happening that are important to mention. And, and definitely I do have an opinion and I think this is the best place to share it. So I wanna thank you for you know taking the time and I hope you're having a fantastic uh, day, a fantastic week. Um, missing the point, that's the name of the podcast today. I was actually considering yesterday, I was thinking what to talk about because there's a lot of things we can always talk about. There's a lot of things that I can bring to the table and have a conversation in regards to it. Uh, in regards to collectible, there's a lot of things to talk about. There's a lot of things to complain, to whine about. <laughs> there's a lot of things that we can pinpoint that I can complain about. The things I don't like about the hobby, the things I don't like about the community in the hobby, the things I don't like about the companies or the things that they're doing. And, you know, we will have time for all of those things. I normally talk about it. If you follow me on JP Side Reviews, you know that I always uh, talk about every week. I have videos about collectibles and I always share my opinion in those videos. In regards to the collectible market, in regards to the hobby, in regards to the company, so it's not something new that I have to share here. It's something groundbreaking or just you know the brand new news that everybody needs to hear or have this new gossip in regards to companies. I don't, even though I've been in this hobby for so long. You know, I was thinking about it yesterday too. I was talking to a friend. Um, they were communicating on Facebook, on Messenger, and I was thinking about, like, I've been in this hobby for a very, very long time. I would say around 20 years. Uh, I took a break within this 20 years, a five-year break uh, when I got married. But beyond that, I've been collecting statues for a very long time. And, you know, I started when the collectibles market was very uh, fresh. Um, there were not many companies operating. I got married, so I took the break just to dedicate my life to my family in that moment, my wife, my daughter, but also uh, to dedicate time to ministry. Uh, I was pastoring back then. And then, you know, came back to it. And that was been probably around 2008, 2009, somewhere there. That's when I got back to statue collecting. And um, I haven't looked back since, you know, in the sense that my life technically... You know, it, it hit the ground running. You know, I started collecting Saisha stuff. And then, of course, I move, you know, out, run out of space and <laughs> out of places to put stuff. You know, a lot of that stuff in storage. And my wife was angry with me because I had so much stuff. So I downgraded. Well, I, you can call it downgraded. But I went into Bowen, which I was already familiar with, for you know, prior. And I went to Kurubuki and all that stuff. So, you know, and I've been doing that ever since. And of course, you know, as a, you know, since I was, I was a child, I was collecting comic books. You know, I was collecting, you know, the, you know, those cards, the hero cards, you know, the sports cards. Uh, I was collecting action figures. <laughs> I've been collecting die casts. I've been collecting so many, so much stuff over the years. It's just like I'm, I just maybe I'm a hoarder. You know, I just love some stuff. But, um, you know, there's so much I can talk about the collectible world. I can talk about movies. You know, there's a lot of stuff happening. I just review on my main channel the Book of Boba Fett. I enjoyed the last episode, but definitely it's not a perfect show. You can go there. And I was thinking maybe I can talk about in depth about what I like and I didn't like in this podcast, which we can do. But you can, you know, I want to give everyone the time to watch it if you haven't watched it. And maybe we can talk in a later episode about the things that I really enjoy, the things that are good and the things that are bad about the that show. And I, I was thinking about maybe talking about it. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff that is coming our way. So there's a lot of announcements on that and the gaming world. There's a lot of stuff coming on Nintendo from Nintendo. You know, we had the Nintendo Direct this week, which, you know, a lot of classic games making their way to Switch, things like that. So we can talk about that. The gaming world, about no, Xbox buying almost everything. Sony also competing on that. We can talk about those things. 
But I want to talk about something that to me, um, it really struck me. Uh, I was um, considering what to talk about. And this morning, I was um, watching some information. I've been reading some information this week in regards to what's happening in the Ukraine and uh, what's happening, um, uh, you know, that conflict that between Russia and the Ukraine. And uh, I was considering that. And I was also considering some stuff that I, from some friends that I've been talking to and the things that they're going through. And it really, it, and I, I see, I've been reading also some posts from some friends on um, Facebook about things they're dealing with, with, with a lot of stress and also depression. And, you know, I've been thinking about talking about depression at some point on my um, channel, Born Again TV. And probably I'm going to talk about it uh, next week in regards to depression, how to deal with it and the, the conflicts with it uh, and the, the reality of depression. I think a lot of people are depressed more than ever. Uh, because of a lot of things, you know, in the world are happening and we go through these ups and downs. But uh, in this episode, I wanted to talk about something that to me is important. I feel that it, it, between all the noise, you know, this is the thing. Among all the noise that we, we got, you know, there's so much noise around us that we miss the point. We miss the point of life. We miss the point of what it really means, or what it really means to be alive. And we don't see that... You know, like in, in our own world, in our own small world, we are so invested into a lot of things, which I'm not against it because I love these things. But unfortunately, when we're so invested into all these things, we miss the big picture of the world. And to see that there are a lot of things that are really serious around us and that people are struggling and that people are also going through hard times and people are afraid. And how can we impact the world? How can we change the world? How the world can be changed? If we, as people that have maybe the power to change, maybe on a small corner, corner of the world, to change our own environment, if we are not being part of the solution, if we're just part of the problem. And I feel that in so many ways, we are so distracted. We are so distracted with everything that comes our way that we miss the opportunity to, to be a, a better, you know, have better impact, to have a greater impact in the world. In, in a way that is really, really matters. And I will tell you this, I have dealt with this question for, for a long time, even producing content on, 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 like here on YouTube, on Facebook, on my podcast. I've been dealing with that question. What is the impact of my life? What is what I'm doing in my life that is really touching people's hearts? Am I being of a help to them beyond just helping them to decide what collectible they're going to buy or what movie they should watch or things like that? Am I help or what comic book or how, you know, what omnibus or hardcover collection they can add to their collection? Am I helping them? Which I know I'm helping. Because a lot of times people, they tell me, I, you know, they tell me all the time, you know, you've been such a great help for me on my collection. You helped me to get into comics. You helped me, you know, and I heard that over the years, which I'm so grateful and thankful and, and you know, humble also that people are paying attention and that I'm being able to help. And that I love that. But beyond those things, I think people are greater beings than just consumers. I feel that sometimes we put the world, we, we see the world as people as, as cattle that can be manipulated and we can just simply sell the next, next best thing. And I think companies do that all the time. They see people as cattle, the way that they can, you know, bring money out. And I, I feel that we need to see the bigger picture about what the world is, what life is and our place in it. And I know that we all have this question. It's so easy sometimes to tune ourselves out of that question or that the, the problems in our lives by just going into our hobbies, going into this mode that we are only fixated in one thing. And I see it. I, I experience it myself. I'm not judging people here on that because I have done the same thing. When things go south, when things are not in the best way, I always my, my, my I would say my vehicle to deal with the situation, to escape the, 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 the realities. It's just to escape the place where I go. My oasis has been my hobbies. But the problem when you go to a hobby is that they are, you know, as much as you think that it's going to give you more, you end up feeling more uh, frustrated with it because hobbies are not, you know, they are things that you can do. They're pastimes, but they're not life. They cannot give what they don't have. You know, an animated thing, a, a statue, as much as beautiful as it is, and as, a, as much as I appreciate the art and what the art, art is trying to convey with the art, they cannot give you joy. They cannot give you peace. They cannot give you meaning. You know, and unfortunately, and I've done this. I'm telling you, I've done this. I have embraced those hobbies in a way many, many, many times. 
in a way that they became everything to me. They became more important than my family. They became more important than my God. They became more important than my relationship with God. They became more important than even my own health or my own well-being, my mental health. And I think when that takes over, we miss the point. We miss the point of why we're doing what we're doing. You know, looking at the world and seeing that things are going and, you know, it, it's so tragic to see mankind, to see us as, as people, you know, regardless of our color, because even at the end of the day, we all bleed the same way. We bleed red. Um, that to see mankind so fixated in things that are not important. We fixated with work. We fixated with making money. We fixated to have a bigger home. We fixated to have, you know, all the newest, the newest collectible available in the market. You know, we fixated and, you know, to watch the every show, every movie that comes out. We fixated to play every video game and buy every game. And we fix it in things that, you know, we, we look at the details. We're so fixated in the details. And something that I, I will tell you, I'm such a perfectionist. And I will tell you this. I am a perfectionist. And that's a problem. You know, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. You know, a good thing because it, it makes me and helps me and pushes me to improve my craft. So what I'm doing here, what I'm doing with my videos, I start to improve. I always see the things that are wrong. And I try to get better at them, you know, so I try to improve on what I'm doing, what I'm saying or what, how I produce certain things. So it's, I'm always in, in a quest to improve my craft. However, when you're in such a quest of improving everything, you're looking at all the little details you miss, you know, to read between the lines, you cannot enjoy the opportunity to, to be creative because you are so fixated into trying to do the best thing instead of just being yourself. It's important for us to be ourselves. And I have learned this and I'm still learning this in, in the hard way. You know, there are videos that I put so much hard into it. There are videos that I'm telling you, I put my heart, I spend so many hours trying to craft, get all the information right, everything correct. And I make the video and I only get maybe 20, 25 viewers. And I get so down, you know, I get so depressed because I put so much hours into it just for a few people just to watch it. And then I make a video out of nowhere well, like I'm just sharing my heart, you know, like I've just expressed how I feel, you know, it's just a quick video, quick notes and stuff like that. And I'm just having fun with it. And all of a sudden that video just explodes, you know, that video gets so many views. People love the video because I'm being me, being more natural. And I feel that in, in many ways, I think when we start, when we stop being so perfectionist about everything, we stop always worrying about the little details and we start just embracing life as it comes to us, the way it comes to us then we have the opportunity to have fun and enjoy life. And you know what? That is something that it permeates in other people. It's contagious. People receive it. They can see the net that you are being who you are natural and they feel the connection and that's how they get close to you. This is how I started my main channel, JP Sour Reviews. When I started making my videos, my first videos were just me on the camera. It was a phone. It was a shaky camera, but it was, I was having fun. I, in that moment, I remember I was uh, watching some of the, you know, I, I've been in YouTube for like 10 years now, but back then the, 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 the people that were doing statue reviews, the ones that were the heroes of the time, you have statues, statue 175, you had Alcacel who is no longer in YouTube. You had Avern 07. You have, you know, some of those older collectors that were doing P2 is still doing stuff, but now no more with statues. There were not that many. There were just a few and I don't remember all of them, but there were a few that were there. And I remember they were just having fun, you know, with the with a really shaky camera, just putting stuff in the statues and, you know, they were sharing their opinion and it was fun. And I said, I want to do the same thing because I was watching them already for, you know, I would say two years, you know, for a couple of years. And I was like, man, I love what they do. So when I got the opportunity to do it myself, one time I was working for this company that I meant for me to walk, you know, to work out of town. So I have to travel constantly and stay in hotels back then and uh i was there and this company and i was in my office about myself and you know i was getting statues there so i was kind of packing statues they were receiving i was receiving statues in the office and i will take them to the hotel with me and then i would bring it home over the weekend and i'm telling you i was there and uh, i just said well then you know let's do it let's just do it and i just grabbed one i reviewed my first statue which was the uh this what was that the Bowen Designs, uh, the Hulk, the Incredible Hulk, the variant, the website work variant version, and also I, I review the Bowen Designs by the Kucharik brothers. Uh, where, uh, in this case, was the the Deadpool. Amazing pieces. I love them. That was the first two statues that I review there. And uh, I went to the hotel. I edited that, which was poorly edited. You know, I didn't know how to edit. All I did is was just you know just upload it into YouTube. That's all it was. That's what I did. 
And that was it. That was the beginning of it. And I loved it. And I remember also when I started doing, in this case, reviewing uh, omnibuses or comic books, it was just the same way. You know, I think a year after, two years after, uh, then I, I saw a video. It was a year after when I saw, I, I was watching that time, uh, a reviewer, which uh, I still on YouTube, but he doesn't do uh, many reviews anymore. Uh, book reviews, uh, comic book reviews. It was a comic toy reviews or something like that. I forgot the name of the guy. I really like him. You know, I loved his format, which was the format that, you know, I've been using for many years. And I said, you know, I like what he's doing. I want to do him too. So I, I did it. It was just the fun of it. My first uh, Omnibus review was the, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man by Tuck McFarlane, you know, by David Michelinie, Tuck McFarlane. And uh, the rest is history. I loved the format. People loved it too. And I was just, it was fun. And of course, I, with a shaky camera, I improved my camera from my phone into a regular camera camcorder that I may have somewhere here, somewhere probably. I never got rid of it. But, um, you know, that was the beginning. I was having fun. And I think when you have fun with life, when you embrace life, I think people can see it and it's contagious. And when you stop worrying about the details, when you stop worrying about the, the things actually not as important as you think they are, when you start seeing the world in a different way, I think people can see it. They can see how natural you are. And I think that's something that people gravitate because we want something to be real in a world that is so fake and unreal. But yeah, looking at the stuff that is happening outside of my window, you know, I can, I can see that the world is not in the best place that, you know, it's never been. It's never been. The world's never been a good place uh, for starters. There's always been challenge. There's always been pain there's always been um difficulty there's always been heartbreak but i feel that you know more than ever we have the power we have the power to change the world we have the power to do you know our part if we are you know really you know if we are fixate ourselves at least not into the details but we fix if we fix ourselves into really doing the best we can in our little corner of the world. I feel that that's my part. You know, what is it, you know, the question that I always ask myself, what is the legacy that I'm leaving behind? What is it what I'm doing with my life that is bringing impact on people's lives beyond just telling them what to buy or not to buy? Beyond just the material things and the spiritual things and the emotional things. Am I impacting people's lives to be the better versions of themselves? Am I impacting people around me? And I would say, I would say if you're listening to this and you're a parent, my question to you, you're a father or a mother, what is the impact that you're living with your children? Is that good impact? It's a good message. It's a good impression that they have of you. Do they see you as a friend? Do they see you as a person that they can lean on in the difficult times of life? Are they are, are able to trust you? Are they able to believe in you because you believe in them? Are you empowering them to be a better versions of themselves when they, you know, as a children, but also as they grow up? Or are you just simply limiting them? You know, kind of give him a smaller picture. And I'm telling you, I, I, I can see that. I Sometimes, you know, I have regrets of the way I, I raised my daughter. She's no longer with us. Of course, she's married. Now she lives on her own. She has her own job and she has her own things to worry about. But in many ways, sometimes I have the regrets of, you know, I ask myself, was I a good father? Was I a good dad? And to be honest, I have never really asked the question to her. She had, you know, I probably I don't dare to ask the question, was I a good dad? And, you know, maybe one day we'll get the conversation started. You know, we can talk about it. But in so many ways, I have regrets because I feel that, you know, I was so sometimes so fixated on a lot of things, which was my job, which was ministry at some point, uh, which was, you know, trying to be a good provider that um, sometimes I didn't have enough time, you know, to be there in what really counts. And yes, I try my best as much as I could to be there for my daughter, you know, to be on her recitals, to be on her sport events and the things that she was involved in school. You know, I was as much involved in a lot of times and difficult times too. But, um, you know, sometimes I feel that I didn't do enough. And to be honest with you, I think we all as parents, and if you are a parent, if you have your kids, you know, maybe you feel, you know, that you're not a good parent. Sometimes we do, I, we feel that way, that we're not doing our best. We're trying, you know, we try, but we, we, we don't get to that place that we feel totally comfortable with what we're doing. I will tell you, just take it easy. So I can tell you this now. I can tell you that from experience now after all these years. It's like, just calm down. <laughs> just take it easy. Take a deep breath and realize that as long as you are human, you're going to make mistakes. 
And because you're going to make mistakes, the most important thing is that you have to love your children. You have to be there for them. Also, you have to give them what they need, which is discipline, which is, you know, a good example. But also to be there when it counts, to be there when you know, it really matters, to be their friend when they need a friend, to be a counselor when they need a counselor, to be sometimes the person that listens. You know, you have to be that person who listens when they have something to say. And there are a lot of things that, you know, we can do. You know, you will never be the best parent in the world. You will never be the best father or the best mother in the world. And that's fine as long as you are who you are. But, you know, the better version of who you are, you know, not just the bad version, but the good version of who you are. Because in the end of the day, I believe that as humans, there's a good side of us and there's a bad side. And sometimes the bad side takes over the good side and it becomes the only person that people see. But we want to people to see the good side, the good person, the person that has faith, the person that believes, the person that trusts, the person that cares, the person that is always there for them. And going back to the point of missing the point, <laughs> going back to the point of missing the point, I feel that when I look at the world, what's happening, I just feel like, okay, what is it that I'm doing that is affecting other people? I might be in part of the solution or I'm being part of the problem. And I think as I get older, as my life changes, you know, now it shift, you know, in the middle of a shift from, you know, like my daughter is no longer here, you know, something that it took me a while to realize, you know, even up to this day, I'm like, you know what, she's gone. Because every day I ask my wife, every day I ask the same question. When I wake up, when I go to sleep, did Sarah, that's the name of my daughter, did Sarah call? Have you talked to her today? Because I don't talk to her much. You know, we talk, you know, she comes and she came the other day and we talk a little bit here and there. But she's busy. She's working. You know, she has a very stressful job. Um, and uh, I don't really talk to her much. Oh, sometimes on the weekend and things like that, she come or we might go out to eat, things like that. So I don't talk to her. But I was asking her. It, it took me a while. And I will always, every single day, I will be telling my wife, oh, I miss my daughter. I miss my daughter. I miss my daughter. Where's my daughter? Where's my daughter? Why she hasn't called? And I, I just got to the place that I realized that she's gone. You know, she's gone in the sense that she has grown up. She's older now. She's grown, she's mature, and she's pursuing her own dreams. And I'm no longer as important to her as I w once was. You know, yes, I'm still her dad, and she still loves me, and she still trusts me, and she still needs me when she needs a dad. But I'm no longer, you know, as important as I once was. And my life has shifted into what is next, you know, because now my priority is not anymore my daughter now. Of course, my priority is my wife. You know, continue paying for the mortgage, which I'm still looking for employment. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm having interviews almost every day. But, um, but importantly, what is the next thing? Am I just fixated into trying to keep paying the bills, you know, which we all have to do anyway? Am I fixated to keep growing my collection of statues or omnibuses, hardcover books, or anything else that comes to mind? Or am I fixated into, you know, to be of impact? To pursue the dreams even when I was young. I even been thinking about, you know, been planning to go back to ministry. I might be in a difference in the world, in a world that is so messed up, in a world that is in need of friends, in a world that is in need of people that are stepping, you know, they step into the gap. You know, they come and they they take the stand and and want to make the difference. You know, there's a couple that I, I really enjoy. They're very young. We call them our kids, my wife and I, because they're very young. They're around my daughter's age. They were even involved in the same part of the same ministry. They're a little older, maybe a couple of years older than Sarah, um, maybe two years or something like that. Beautiful couple. I interviewed them on my main channel, Born Again TV. I will have the link for those who are interested. And they are fantastic people. I love them. I, I saw them this Sunday. They were here at our church. They, they were involved with the church. I go to his, uh, in this case, uh, the, the kid, his, his father is the pastor of the church where I've been uh, a member for, you know, for a good amount of years now, I think probably eight, eight, seven years. And, um, you know, he, he, him and his wife, they left. His wife is from South Africa. Uh, they're amazing people. They're very young. So they went to Florida. They were involved into um, in school for ministry because they want to be missionaries. And that's the purpose. They, they've, been, they've been doing that for a while. They've been traveling uh, around the world, doing missionary work. Very young, but they're very involved. So they were here, and uh, they were happy because my wife and I, we still support them. Um, you know, we still help them financially. Uh, we felt in our hearts to do it. We call, it, we call them our kids because we feel that. You know, I think it's the parent in us. You know, that our daughter is gone, but we still have, you know, someone that we want to bless. And 
they were here. They're going on a mission, a missionary tour with other young people from the school. They're going to different campuses around the, the United States. They're going, uh, sharing the gospel, sharing the truth, praying for people. And they've been involved in that, and they're going to be doing that this year. Um, that's what they're doing that part. It's part of the, the school. The, you know, they, I think that what the, the, the stuff that is theoretical, the stuff that they do at school is done for now, and they have to do now the practical. So that's what they're doing. But part of their group, he was telling me, what is in the Ukraine right now. They went there, but because of the conflict that has happened between Russia and Ukraine, they have to leave the Ukraine because they were in a really hot area, so they move into another country nearby. Uh, he didn't specify which country, but they're close. You know, they've been doing ministry over there, you know, helping another group of them. They went to Dubai, and there was some... Close to the, where they were, there was a terrorist attack recently, so they have to be moved to another place. But they're, they're doing ministry. And I was thinking about it, you know, make me, and you know, we, we pray about it and that, you know, when in church, we pray about the situation. We pray for, you know, for them, you know, uh, encourage them into what they're doing. But to me, it's like, it brings everything. You know, sometimes the world is so, you know, the world has become so small. You know, because of social media, because of the internet, you know, we, we can see the world now closer than ever. However, the world has become so big because even though it's so close to us, we're so distant of it. You know, we're so far away from it. We, we take ourselves out of the world and put ourselves into this own world that we create these walls around us that only let us see what we want to see. But we don't see the reality that is around us, the pain that people are struggling the people that the, the conflicts that are happening around the world. There's so many conflicts everywhere, whether it's in Africa, Middle East, Europe now, of course, with the Ukraine and, uh, and Russia and things that are happening. People are suffering in so many parts of the world. You know, there's people in need. You know, the COVID also has made things more difficult for a lot of people. E economical upheaval. You know, there's a lot of things like going to the supermarket now. You barely find some of the basic things that you, you saw two years ago that were there and we took for granted. Now it's like you're running out of things. They're running out of everything, the basic things. And to me, that's amazing. Of course, you know, as a Christian, I know it's the end times. You know, I, I totally understand that. But the thing is this, as long as we are here, as long as we have life, what are we doing? What is it that what we're doing to create an impact to benefit some people next to us? That's the question. That's the question because the truth of the matter, and I've said it many, many times before, the day I die, I'm not going to take any of the things that I purchase, any of the things that I invested my time on, any of my toys or my statues or my, you know, anything. I'm not taking them with me. What am I taking? You know, nothing. The only thing that I invested my life is what is going to remain. Am I investing for something that really has value? Am I missing the point? And I ask my question this all the time. Because the truth of the matter is that we get so involved in so many things that have no eternal value, that have no importance in, in the big scheme of things. And then we just so become, you know, we're like just the addicts. You know, we're an addict. You know, we become so addicted to a lot of things that they become the drug that keeps us going, but they don't give us any life. You know, like you are like a crackhead, you know, and I'm using that expression, you know, we're like crackheads that... You know, we're so ready for the next fix, but we're not doing anything of value, of importance in our lives. We're just wasting it. And we have to be very careful because addiction is more than just using drugs. Addiction, you know, it's about what we becomes our, the altar that we, the God that we praise, the one that it becomes everything, but it cannot give us anything. And you know what? I, I choose God over everything. And that could be an addiction to my kind of addiction. For some people go to religion as an addiction. But he, can give, he gives me life. He gives me joy. He gives me peace. Something that material things have never done. You know, and I've been, I'm telling you. When I'm telling you this, is because I've been experiencing it. I'm not telling you because I'm just coming up with this idea. I'm telling you because I've been involved in statue collecting and uh, comics for a big part of my life. Since I remember. And I, I've always collected things, toys, all everything. I've been involved in so much things, but none of those things bring joy, at least eternal joy or purpose, you know? Yeah, it become part of our lives, but they can also become such a weight that we carry on our shoulders that it's just hard sometimes to get rid of. You know, it's like we wake up worrying about if the next statue is going to come the way they show it on the prototype. We worry about, is that omnibus is going to come any day? Are they going to release it? You know, and I have fun with all those things. But ultimately, none of those things will give me value or can change people's lives. 
You know, they cannot change my life. Yes, you can say, well, he changed my life. Come, he saved me and all that. We could always say that. You know, I hear it all the time. But they, they, did they really did that? Did they really do that? Did they really change your life? You know, and yeah, I can say that sometimes some of these things have kept me from going into other routes of doing other things, being addicted to other things in my life. But at the same time, it is not everything. And it's not the only thing that, and it's not the only thing in the world. And ultimately, it's the most important thing. You know, this is not helping people to survive. This is not bringing food to the table of millions of people are starving right now. You know, while we worry so much about paying, you know, so much in this collectibles, you know, the, the shipping freight, the freight being so high, you know, sometimes we, we are willing to pay the price, but other people are suffering. You know, other people are struggling. Are we really helping them? Are we really doing our part? You know, and yes, you cannot, you know, this is the thing. We cannot take the whole world on our, on our end because at the end of the day, you don't, we don't have the power. I don't have the power to feed thousands of people. I don't have the power to feed thousands. But I can always provide what I have as that child that came and only have a couple of you know, pieces of fish and bread and I give it to God. And sometimes that little thing can really feed many. And this is something that my wife and I have been doing. And uh, I, I don't want to boast here because that's not the point. But I'm saying my wife, and my, I will say that the credit goes to my wife because she has the heart for it more than I do. She invests. She always puts money and help ministries that go around the world or, you know, that they, they help people when they're in child slavery helping women that they, you know, that they're coming out of, you know, abuse, prostitution. She always helping, you know, people with money. And like we always do that. You know, she always does that. She always sends, and now no, we no longer send a check, but now it's, it's a direct deposit thing where there is feeding the hungry. She always does that. And you know what? That's an importance. And the question that I ask people, are we doing that? Are you doing that? And I'm not here to judge if you do or you don't, you don't have to answer that. Something that you have to check. Are you helping people? Are you helping the person right next to you when you go on your way to work and you see right there at the metro, at the sub station, and you see the person right next to it that has always been there, sitting there begging for, and it's so easy to judge people because they're beggars. Are we helping them? You know, sometimes we don't understand the story of people, you know, how broken they can be. Are we are there to help? Are we listening to our coworker at work, the person that is always struggling with something, and you know he needs a friend, but he has no friends, nobody's there to, you know, to be with them. Are you going to lunch with that person? Are you say, let's go to lunch together? Are you taking time just to listen, to be a friend? There are a lot of things we can do. There are a lot of things we can do. I cannot change what's happening in, uh, right now in the Ukraine. I can, uh, all I can do is pray for the, whatever is happening over there for people to be okay. I know people are hurting. I know people are hurting in other parts of the world. People are hurting in our communities. Can I be there to them? The people that just, the, the, the neighbors that just lost a child because, you know, to drug addiction to suicide? Are, are we there for them? Are we there to help them? Or are we just simply run to our men cave to escape the reality of the world and we enslave ourselves into there, not even listening to our own family and the needs they have? You know, they need us. Are we there for them? That's the question. Are we missing the point? I'm telling you, I'm not going to hear, I'm not here to judge you. But one thing I, I'm here to tell you is to remind you that you're important, to remind you that you have value. And that you're here in the world, not just for, it's not a casualty. You were not just brought into this for nothing. You have power. And if God has given you a certain level of power in, in your life, then you can use that to, to bless others. And believe me, the moment you do it, you're liberated from so many things. You're liberated from worrying. You're liberating from, you know, a lot of things that sometimes we carry from worrying. Then you feel peace because you did something. And you know what? That's the best thing that, you know, I will tell you one thing. The best thing that I, the best sensation in my life, the best thing that I always felt, the thing that really gives you so much satisfaction than anything else in the world, more than anything. And I'm telling you, it gives you more satisfaction even than sex. I'm telling you this. I got to be honest with this. Is when you help someone that cannot pay you back. And they look at, the, they look at their face, their smile, their joy, their tears of joy. It's such a blessing. Nothing in the world is comparable to that. Not even unboxing a new statue or opening a new, you know, unwrapping a new book can compare to the satisfaction to see the, the eyes of a child, of a person, of a woman that has been through a bad relationship or a man, an old person that you're there to, say, you know, to be there for them when they, it's needed the most. When you're there to say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, when you're there to bless them when they're alone, 
when you help them and they look at their eyes. You know, there's nothing else in this world that brings more satisfaction to feel that you help someone that is unable to pay you back. And to be honest with you, that is the same eyes of God in our lives because he did something that we could never be able to pay back. You know, he gave his son to die for us on the cross. And I know many of us, many of the people that listen to this, many are not Christian. I know some of you are agnostic or Muslim. You are Jewish. You know, I respect all the beliefs. But at the end of the day, I think we all created the image of God. And we all believe in a higher power for sure. And there's nothing more satisfying. Nothing more satisfying to do something that you know nobody can pay you back. Not because you feel, like, oh, now I, I have power over them. No. But to be able to see that I did something. I made a difference for someone's life. And, you know, someone is in a better place now than it was before because I did something, because I stepped into it and I came and I just not, I was not, I didn't just simply cowardly back away and keep going with my life, but I just went in and I did what I needed to do. That makes a difference. And I'm telling you, the more we do it, the more people are going to do it because the world, the difference, the world, the difference in the world starts with one person. One person makes a difference and then the rest follow. So we have to be that person. You know, that's the way we have to do it. So don't miss the point, my friend. Don't miss the point. Just get to it. Get to it. Whatever it is that you have to do, whatever it is, whatever you have in your hands to give, do it. Whether you say, well, I don't know anything, but I do have a lawnmower and I can actually cut the grass of my neighbors, the elderly neighbors that cannot do it anymore. I, that's something. That's something. That makes a difference. Helping the, the single mom that is dealing with, you know, all the kids and trying to help them. Maybe sometimes the kids need some help with math or in school. You know, they can come home and they, you can help them. You know, there's so much you can do. There's so much I can do. But we so fixated into things that are not important. Going to work, coming back from work, just stuck in the, in the computer, you know, watching videos or fighting with people, arguing with people about the next thing, collectible, whatever. Or they're playing video games. And we got stuck and we miss the point. We miss the opportunities to be of difference to people that really need us, starting with our family and following with our neighbors and the people right next to us. Yes, you know, we can go to the world. We can, I can go to Australia. I can go. There's so much need everywhere. But the, the most important need, the most pressing matter is the one that is right next to us. And there are people there that really need us. So think about it. My friends, I want to say thank you very much for taking the time to listen to the podcast. It's a, it's a blessing. It's a, it's a pleasure to talk to you. If you agree with me or disagree with me, or you want to share anything with me, you can come here on YouTube. You can actually share that. Tell me what you think about it. Tell me what you think about the podcast. You can also go to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. The links are in the description. Let me know what you think. Share this podcast with your friends. You can do that through the different you know, social media platforms. Just send the link to them. Let them know that we're here doing something, at least trying to make a difference for the world in our small little corner. So my friends, God bless you. Take care. I'll talk to you again. Bye-bye.